five plus tips, tricks, exploits, glitches every Hogwarts player needs to know. Now, if you guys do enjoy this video and want to see more Hogwarts Legacy, make sure you subscribe and turn those notifications on. Also, leaving a like really helps me out. Okay, so today, guys, I bring you five plus tips and tricks you need to know about this game. These will help you level up quicker, earn tons of XP, money, and many other things. Okay, so we're going to start with XP and reaching that level 40, the quickest way to do this. Okay, so it's important to mention that XP is tied directly to your challenges. The only way you can get to a level 40, which is max level in this game, is to complete every challenge in the game. Yes, I know this is kind of hard to believe, but it's true. For instance, if we were looking challenges, guys, we can see it says defeat 100 dark wizards. Upon you doing this final challenge, guys, and unlocking this trait, you will get no more XP for defeating wizards after this point. Same goes for those dug bugs, same goes for those goblins and every other enemy in the game. You will earn XP from said enemy until you unlock their represented challenge. Once that challenge is done, you will no longer earn XP from them. And this isn't just enemies you can defeat too. These are quests, this is exploration, this is fuel guide pages, this is room of requirement stuff. Every single challenge here has XP tied to it. So yes, the only way to get to a level 40 is to complete these challenges. So keep an eye on them. Okay, so how about earning fast XP? I mean, yes, we know they're tied to challenges, but what tips and tricks can I give you guys to earn quick XP so you can level up faster? Well, obviously doing quests will earn you XP and also doing the many, many exploration challenges scattered around the map will also give you XP. Things like popping balloons, things like the landing platforms, things like the Merlin trials, these will all give you XP. But in my opinion, the quickest way you can earn XP is by doing those combat challenges and that means defeating certain enemies and the fastest way to defeat certain enemies in no time at all is those battle arenas now battle arenas can be found on the map there are three in total if you have the dark arts battle arena if you don't have this and you don't have the dark arts pack there's only two you can locate and play within one's located up north and one's located down south you can see these on the screen right here Go here guys, destroy waves of enemies and while you are doing this guys you will be completing challenges or combat challenges. You will defeat many dark wizards, you will defeat goblins, the inferi, spiders and also complete those dueling feats at the same time. So this is a real quick way of earning fast XP to level up, especially through those early levels of the game. And at the same time guys you will also unlock traits for doing these, cosmetics for your gear. So yes, get these done. These are definitely in my opinion one of the quicker ways to earn XP. Now a trick you can use here guys is changing the game's difficulty settings. If you put this on a story difficulty, there's more or less no challenge from enemies within this game. And that means when you're in those battle arenas, you're just going to wipe out waves without having any trouble whatsoever. It makes no difference to the XP gains either. Again, XP is tied to your challenges. Changing the game's difficulty will not change anything in regards to XP. Now, another way to earn quite a bit of XP, it's so around 2,000, well, 1,800 to be precise, is to capture those beasts. Now, if you've progressed the game to get yourself the room requirement and you've then progressed Deke, if you haven't done this, do this. Progress Deke, any who have a quest for you called the Alf, the Nabsack and the Loom. Complete this quest and you'll get the Nabsack. The Nabsack means you can go around and collect those beasts. There's actually, guys, an easy way to earn XP from collecting beasts if you haven't done it already. Because there's a total of 30 XP per beast you can collect and a total of 60 beasts rewarding you this XP. So that's 1800 XP, which you can do relatively quickly. Quickly. Now if you've got the knapsack, you want to come to this spot on the map right here. This is a great place to capture between 8 and 10 beasts in probably a minute or so and these will all give you XP if you haven't earned it already. Again, change your game's difficulty to that story difficulty and literally all you have to do guys is point the knapsack at that beast and activate it. You'd have to do nothing else and it means capturing beasts is so much easier. Now to reset these beasts people, all you need to do is capture all of the beasts within this area, fly away from this area, reset time of day in your map menu and then come back guys and the beast will have reset. So yes, two easy ways to earn a ton of XP in the game. Otherwise guys, it's all down to your challenges. 
Okay, so what about money? What about that gold? What about that galleon? Well, again, capturing these beasts is by far the best way to do this. And well, if you have that knapsack, like I've already explained, this is rewarded to you for completing the quest of the Alfred knapsack and the loom. And once you have this knapsack, it means you can collect beasts and then go ahead and sell them. And then you want to come to this puff skin den right here. So come to this puff skin den, people, and capture all of these little puff skins. Make sure you've caught every one of them. Then guys, simply jump on your broom and fly to this point a couple of hundred yards away. Then guys, just skip time by once. After doing this, go back to that puff skin den and all of the little critters will have respawned. Simply catch them again. And wait and rinse repeat this guys until your inventory is full. And it really is that simple. All you gotta do is make sure you've caught every puff skin within this den. Using that revelio to reveal where they are is just a massive, massive plus because I do believe if any escape and you forget to pick them up, it can mess up the rotation of trying to get them to respawn. And you can rinse and repeat this guys until your inventory, your beast inventory is full. Now eventually this beast inventory will get bigger so you can hold up to like 40, probably a bit more of these beasts at once. So you can earn a ton of money doing this. But yes, once that inventory is full, simply head to the brood and peck vendor within Hogsmeade. Here guys, you can sell all of these beasts for 120 gold each. Now another way you can earn plenty of money, and this is more or less an AFK sort of thing if you want to do other things, and that is by breeding numerous pets. Now if you've gone through Deke's entire quest line, which means you have completed the mission for him of Phoenix Rising, you will have unlocked four vivariums within your room of requirement. Now each one of these vivariums can hold four breeding pens, so that's 16 breeding pens. So if you have 16 sets of parents, it means you can breed 16 babies every 30 minutes. This means you can earn roughly 2,000 gold, 2,000 gallon, well actually it's about 1,920 to be precise, every 30 minutes. Which I know it's nowhere near as good as the farm I've just spoke about, but it's still decent if you're doing other things. So yes, if you want to do this, you will need to purchase the breeding pen from the Tomes and Scrolls vendor within Hogsmeade, and you will need plenty of Moonstone, which I'll talk about in a second, to set all these up. It doesn't matter what beasts you have, all babies sell for the same. So what about Moonstone? How can you get fast Moonstone? I mean, if you want to do up your room of requirements, if you want to do up your vivariums, what methods can you use to get plenty of Moonstone? Because you're probably going to need it. Now, firstly, when you unlock the room of requirement, you will be taught about many of the spells you can use to define your experience with editing your room of requirement. And you will learn about the Evaniskull spell. What this does is it allows you to use this spell on certain objects and it will turn them into Moonstone only within your room of requirement stop. But if you walk around within your room of requirement, every single painting, wall decoration, lamp, chair, rug, all can be turned into that Moonstone. Now if you take about five minutes doing this, you can earn easily 500 plus Moonstone for this. So that's an easy way to get a nice chunk of Moonstone to start. Another thing you can do is is buy the refineries from the Tomes and Scrolls of Vendor within Hogsmeade, set them up within your room of requirement, and these will give you 10 Moonstone every 10 minutes. You can conjure a max of three of these, so that's 30 Moonstone every 10 minutes, which isn't bad going, but you will have to stand around because it won't continuously make this. You have to pick up the 10 before it starts on the other 10, so it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but hey, it's free moonstone at the end of the day but there is guys a much better way of getting moonstone and you will earn well a max of 999 in probably about 10 to 15 minutes and this is how you do it on screen now guys you want to come to this point on the map which is far left of the north hogwarts region area and you want to come to this flue flame now from this point guys you can run a route and earn an absolute ton of that moonstone and you'll see me running this route on screen now now once you get to the end of this route people simply fast travel back to that flu flame, the coral runes flu flame. From here guys, you need to skip time six times because you need to skip three days. If you skip three days, all of these materials will have respawned. So you need to go into your menu people and skip time six times. Skipping it once only changes 12 hours. So skipping it six times will change it three days. Then guys, you can simply run this route again until you're maxed out on those moonstone. And it really is as simple as that. Reach repeat until you've got enough.
Okay, so another trick you can use guys, this will help you with legendary gear, it will help you with traits and many other things. Now scattered around this whole open world map, there are plenty of these legendary chests, so keep an eye out for them. These guarantee you those legendaries. But there's a trick you can use to give you a guaranteed legendary that you need. For instance, if you desperately need a neckwear legendary or a cloak and robes legendary, there's a way to guarantee you get these. And it's simple. So once you locate one of these chests, all you want to do is create a manual save before you open these chests. Then guys, go ahead and open the chest. If it's not a piece that you need for a certain gear slot, simply load up that save you just created and rinse and repeat. Do this guys until you get that slot of gear legendary that you need. This also works with every other chest in the game, including those ornate trait chests. So if there's certain traits you are looking for for your gear to perfect your build, you can do this with those chests too. Now the trait chest comes from the bandit camps. So on your map you'll see plenty of these bandit camps. Size doesn't matter whatsoever. And when you go to these bandit camps people, you'll have to take out a certain group of enemies. Once you do this, you can loot that ornate chest, which guarantees you a trait. But if you use that same method here guys, creating a manual save before opening this chest. If you then open a chest and don't get a trait you want, you can simply reload up that save you just made and keep opening the chest until you get that trait that you need. Now these chests will drop uh, traits from tier 1 all the way up to a tier 3. It is random, but obviously once you have that trait, it's locked out of the loot pool. So traits get easier and easier to unlock. So keep that in mind. Now lastly people are settings I want to give you guys to make this game a more enjoyable experience especially if you play it on console with that controller. So go into your settings guys and go down to display settings in my opinion here these are absolutely a must. You want to turn off motion blur, turn off that depth of field, you want to turn off this chromatic aberration and you want to turn off film grain. These will make your experience and the way the game looks a much better one in my opinion. The depth of field I'd probably say try out for yourself i mean this does impact the gpu performance as it says but turning off can basically solve many performance issues the game is having right now so for now try it with it off and see how it feels for you in regards to performance mode you can either have fidelity or performance me personally i feel 60 frames with performance is the way to go but hey if you can handle 30 frames with a higher resolution try that out but in my opinion it definitely impacts gameplay now you also want to come down to now gameplay options here guys it's important you turn this off if combat is feeling a bit weird for you camera relative targeting when this is on which is default selects active targets with the camera when it's off selects active targets with the movement stick grants off screen enemy targeting now if you've ever noticed when you're in a battle and you're aiming for one enemy and it just hits the other that's because this is on turn this off guys and you're 90 percent of the time hit that enemy you're trying to focus on which is massive in regards to that target and it does make a massive massive difference now when i first started playing this game the controls felt weird the camera sensitivity felt weird aiming felt weird everything felt weird and i quickly spent my first hour or so adjusting my settings and these are the ones i've come to now to absolutely love the game feels perfect for me with these now with these what i would say is you probably you can copy mine see how it feels for you or you can slightly adjust them a little more aiming sensitivity i didn't touch and neither did the aiming acceleration i've left these i believe as they were but the camera acceleration the camera sensitivity and the follow camera speed all I adjusted slightly upwards so try these out guys and see how they feel for you but there we have it guys Hogwarts legacy tips tricks exploits and more and well if you did enjoy this video leaving a like really helps me out if you like what you see and want to see more Hogwarts be sure to subscribe guys check out my channel for probably every guide you're ever going to need on this game and hopefully people I will see you on that next one